Hello everyone and welcome to your weekly tarot guidance for March the 27th until April the 2nd, 2023. Now we do have, at least from an astrological perspective, quite an intense week ahead of us where Pluto and Mars have recently changed signs. Saturn has recently also changed signs, so this means a strong adaptation is needed. So all of us basically are getting used to a lot of subtle but also not so subtle changes that are ongoing in our lives. So this isn't the easiest energy. Now, going to the tarot reading, I have used a Nature Gaia themed uh, deck because nature has basically solutions to every possible problem. So the reading is opened by the Four of Water, which is like the Four of Cups in classic tarot and Rider Y. Um, and this represents that we are truly seeking ourselves this week. A lot of changes, or at least a lot of uh, expected changes where they haven't occurred yet, but we might already have a date, a time. Some people, for example, might be moving, starting new jobs, important things going on in their lives. For others still, you know, this Pluto squaring the notes already put them into financial crisis mode. So a lot of things can be going on in our lives, but this is where it's clear to all of us that things are already not the same. So the shift, the change, the reconfiguration is definitely something absolutely certain in the close future. And this takes, you know, a lot of courage to face in such a way because the Six of Water does represent that we are seeking something that is familiar to us, especially on a soul level. Something that is also, a, so to speak, home for the inner child. And when I say home for, that, for the inner child, well, that is basically not a place, but a life setup. Or basically an inner setup. A... a mindset or a worldview that you're embracing which supports the inner child, which gives it enough space or opportunity in your everyday life, of course, for it to manifest, for it to have a saying, playfulness, creativity, the joy of life, innocence, and all the smaller and bigger moments that go with it. Well, this is what you might be very, very, very strongly feeling this week that your soul is calling for, your soul is looking for, your soul is seeking. And as this child of earth, which would be the page of coins, is suggesting, well, this does need to have a palpable element to it. So you're looking for something. If there is a for example, a blockage in your life that Pluto just highlighted not so long ago, or if there are certain pro urgent, more urgent financial or administrative or at your job or health, it can be so very many things, problems that you need to address right now, well, you also need a lot of power to hold together basically that part of your life which needs your undivided attention in the now immediately and it cannot wait but also to answer this soul calling of yours what it is that you're seeking for because there is the present to be tackled with but this is where we're building it also in the present of our futures so whatever life throws at us is one side aquarius pluto in aquarius is one side of the picture and there is the other side which maybe is the same for everyone right now what how are we stepping into our future what is our future who are we what are we doing and where are we personally as souls because this is as i said soul calling where are we going towards what are we going to integrate in our lives to service for the long term and not just as children 
and every other connected soul, of course. So this is very, very important from a spiritual, emotional, even psychological perspective. Because this energy might play out in different areas of life for different people. For some people, this might be more a Piscean expression, for example. It goes on in the soul, in the dreams, inside the psyche, and not all that much outside. Maybe outside is, you know, usual. Nothing is extraordinary, even though I... If we are looking at just the collective reality, and, and basically the collective, I would not say it's usual. But, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. For other people, this might be something very concrete, as in a, a health problem, or something that needs to be solved right now. Or some people might be heavily affected by exactly what's going on externally in the world out there. Banks collapse collapse etc so you know the crisis can come from there but regardless of this there is this side and there is the soul searching side and we can see in continuation the three of fire which would be the three of wands and the five of water which is the five of cups and the seven of air which would be the seven of swords this is where there is a certain sadness a certain how should I say? I don't want to say depression. I don't want to say like heavy melancholy because I do see that it is not. It is sadness. It is, you know, vulnerability. Very, very strong vulnerability. Emotional, you know, weakness in a sense. But it is, we might not be living this as all that much drama, but rather we might already have the wisdom, the inner wisdom, the inner feeling to also know that this is just a source of power. We need to be, we are exactly where we need to be right now, including this sadness, including this perhaps disappointment, but it is not necessarily the present that is disappointing us, but more like the opportunities that we can anticipate in the future. Nothing calls very, very strongly upon us. Nothing really offers us that seven of water energy, the, the, the safety in the sense of feeling found in the emotion, in the activity in the place in the relationship in your spirit whatever that is but feeling found feeling in a certain way immersed into it saturn in pisces does need a very strong immersion into our faith so to speak or into our dreams or whatever that our healing for example anyway the three of fire the three of wands basically but the five of cups and the seven of uh, swords, this is where we are not really fooled by this five of cups. It's not the, the classical, the typical disappointment. It is just seeking something, feeling it so near, yet that not being there yet, or as of yet. But we do feel something, and we're... L we're, we're, we're actually trying we're on overdrive but this is more like our innermost being is in a kind of overdrive how to offer us solutions answers a certain feeling of at least direction but i do believe towards the end of the week this is when the energy is going to change a lot this nine of wands and in this deck it's called nine of fire the moon eight of air which would be the eight of swords and the Three of Earth, which is the Three of Coins. That means a soul level awakening. This is definitely the energy of a great awakening. Which will Eight of Air, Eight of Swords, reach our mental sphere as well, our higher mental sphere. And it will set something into motion in our lives. 
something quite practical. Whatever might we might be feeling on a very strong soul level that we're seeking, that sense of, I don't know, immersion, belonging, that sense at least that our vibe, our mood, our inner is in tune with us and it reflects our truth. And it basically, we master it. We, we already found it as an integration. So we are seeking that. And then comes that small moment of sadness and disappointment where nothing is certain in the present. Nothing shows itself. Nothing is out there. We're just looking for potential solutions, scenarios. We're playing with thoughts, ideas, timing, resources, what-ifs, energies. And as I said, there is the disappointment part uh, that nothing is what I want. Nothing is what I see. Nothing resonates, basically. But there is also a playfulness to it that, well, even if it doesn't resonate, at least I'm doing something. At least I am analyzing and I'm getting somewhere with this. So that's why I am saying that it's not the typical depression. It's not the typical doom and gloom and the drama where, oh, I'm lost and everything is... Um, no. But whatever that soul level awakening it is, it is a really, really powerful moment that might impact many of us at towards the end of the week. Because, as I said, it sets something into motion. Either a scenario that we thought out was the one that we need and it's going to work because it will set it into motion. Or something, someone comes and shows us the way. We might get a helping hand from somewhere, someone. But it can also be an invisible someone where the divine might be also extremely close because it is infusing us with an inner guidance, emotions. Uh, as I said, the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands in classic tarot is strength in opposition. So we are fighting against, with great power, but we're fighting against something or defending ourselves from a, an external oppression, etc. And what we are fighting against, well, it's very clear. The solutions that need to come into our lives are the weapons against the problems, basically. So that is the strength in opposition. But strength comes and the moon is awakened. You know, it's like electricity hits the soul. It is shocked into awakening. And this eight aware with the three of earth, that which is trapping us or that which was until that moment, you know, more like being caught in the spider web. Well, the spider web is now a trampoline which gets you where you need, bounces you where you need to be. And this three of earth, well, for some people, this is job work, income, collaboration, association. So this is where things, the gears are actually working. So the divine machine in your life is on full blast. Now, all of this may reflect externally as well. Now, the four of water externally represents borders, the history of a nation or the recent history, the past four years, or the cycle of four years, presidential elections are upcoming and stuff like that. And this sends worry. Now, whatever has happened in the past, you know, the, especially I get here, the recent past sends worry out there because they're a child of earth. You know, a crisis might be knocking on the door. And this nine of fire is not as positive externally as individually because it means uprising, protest, revolution, why the heavy one? And the eight of air might represent something hits the internet, news, uh, information, and a lot of restrictions. This is where the internet might see heavy restrictions freedom of speech or what you're allowed to share or algorithms and stuff like that. And I also asked additional cards and these are non-tarot and I wanted to highlight the collective expression of the energy with this. So these cards with this 
Leo energy, Libra energy, and Capricorn energy, and Virgo energy, of course, this represents a lot of activity in courts of justice. So whatever trials, important legal cases, have been initiated, promoted, maybe in the over the course of the past four years, or the four of water can represent 2020. And a lot has happened in 2020. So those are going to have some consequences now. Final ruling or stuff like that. Now, this also will hit the international courts of justice where maybe, as the first card suggests, the world leader is going to be trialed. Or maybe there is going to come a surprise news about a world leader who either has frail health or is thinking about stepping down. Now, this Virgo energy also represents, you know, maybe health problems again, or a crisis in the healthcare, strikes, protests, and discrimination. And I also uh, drew an oracle card as guidance, and this is both externally and individually, let love be your beacon. How absolutely beautiful. And, you know, do I even need to interpret this? I don't think so, because this is so self-explanatory. And this doesn't make sense. It is not just that a beautiful card popped out and what a wonderful message. No, this is so very in tune with what we're living right now. Just look at the astrology of it. Pluto in the sign of Aquarius. That's the mind. That's the higher mind. That's the big, big, big truth, both collectively and individually, that we need to let them sink in. But some truth can be scary if we see them mentally, even if it's a higher mind. Like, for example, <clears throat> something, a job, a city, a relationship simply, that was always a valuable, nice part of your life, permanent part of your life, and it always made you happy, and, you know, I can, of course, continue the list here, simply does not resonate with you anymore, it does not reflect you, who you are, and for no, um, you know, bad reason, if that makes sense, like, for no reason other than emotions change, feelings change, things burn out, things get outdated, and Saturn, you know, freshly entered into the sign of Pisces, the sign of finalities. Some things are ripe, and they need to be harvested. Nothing lasts forever, not even feeling, not even relationship, not even job, not even soul path, nothing is meant to last forever. Everything will have to flow at a moment. And we are invited to do exactly that. Release attachments, release the grip and accept it that the time is done for that. You know, when a fruit is ripe, it has to fall down from the tree. Some fruit will rot on the tree, it will stay in the winter, but ultimately in the spring it will still fall down. So why be that fruit who has to rot on the branches of the tree? Why not be the fruit who feeds the soil or gave itself to a animal, human? You know, you want, who returned into the cycle? So this is what I'm sensing here. This is Pluto and Aquarius. Some things have reached their end. And there doesn't have to be any reason than simply this. The time is up. This is how nature works. So when we know that the time is up, and we know Pluto, this is when we can let it go gracefully, with wisdom, with a lot of dignity, or we can allow the mind to set into doom and gloom mood, fear, why, and guilt tripping us. Why this, why that, but the past, but the... This is when the opposite sign of Aquarius is Leo, the heart. 
Black Moon Lilith in it, of course, right now. But that's not a bad thing, because Black Moon Lilith, I think, joins the sun in Ares. So, why the guilt? The fruit is not guilty that it's ripe. Neither is the bird, human, whatever, eating it guilty. The time is the timing of all things. This is why we are here. The timing of all things is a lesson that absolutely everything, every sentient living breathe, every sentient living being has to learn, experience, accept, and integrate here in the earthly material plane. This is one of the constant lessons of Earth School, which can never ever be not taught. You know, this is like the health and safety course that is taught every three months. It doesn't, even if you heard it 10 billion times, the fire rescue or safety check operation and the tests and the theory that is taught at periodically, if you know what I mean. There is no escape. If you heard it 10 billion times and you're better than the instructor already, good for you. But, you know, it is what it... And the timing of things, Saturn, the cycle, planting the seed, growing the fruit, and then ripe, and then harvest, and then death, you know, the cycles are sacred, and the cycles are lessons that, you know, are taught to absolutely any living sentient being, regardless of their wisdom, power. If you come here, you have to basically take part of that lesson, even if you learned it already 10 million times. So this is why we need to let go peacefully, gracefully, in a dignified way, with whatever this Pluto is telling us that it, the time is up. And again, where I'm going with this is uh, Leo. Love, ultimately, and the inner child. And everything, basically, that enchants the heart. So, of course, let love be your beacon. Because if you add a lot of love, and when I say love, acceptance of the past, acceptance that basically sometimes we have these epiphanies like now that everything in our lives was perfect maybe a month ago we we felt the opposite and now we feel this perfection of everything that happened to us the and then it means our hearts are already tuned to a greater love and if love is our beacon then you can imagine that whatever we need to let go, whatever we need to say bye-bye in our lives, will be like a ceremony, like a celebration, and not a doom and gloom where our mind sends us into panic, into depression, into fear. And, you know, when we do this, immediately what needs to come next will come before its time, basically. Because the child energy... Children are impatient by nature. So if we've done the graciousness of the saying goodbyes, then the new and the next, the solution, or basically just the emotion of feeling found is definitely going to come. So this concludes today's reading. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for all the love, all the support. And if you'd like to support me and my channel, you can donate in the PayPal link in the description below. Thank you again until next time. Bye for now.